Welcome into the Treveca Sports Network. I'm Lucas Panzica. Joining me today is third-year Treveca men's basketball head coach, Omar Mance. Coach Mance, thank you for doing this. How are you? Thank you, Lucas, and welcome to the family. It's exciting. Thank you so much. It's been a great couple of weeks, and we were talking earlier. I know it's exactly the same feelings that you felt, just that welcoming vibe when you first stepped on campus here a couple of years ago. Yeah, no, I, I, we're excited to have you and the people. I mean, the people at Trebekah is why it's so special. And when I came on campus and met everybody, like you said, people are, are awesome here. The leadership's awesome. So we're happy to have you, and I'm, I'm glad to be back here for year three to, to do something special. Coach, let's dive into it here with, with the situation that we're all surrounded by all summer and, and even bleeding into right now. The focus has just been so much on the here and now. Uh, if a football season will happen, if kids – are going to be able to get back to school. As the head coach of the Treveca men's basketball program, what have these few months been like for you, knowing that you might have some more time to prepare and get back on the floor, but there's still that same level of uncertainty right now? Yeah, you know, it's obviously been a, a very unique year, and, and we know there's just a lot that's been happening since this summer. Um, we are excited to be here. You know, our guys have really connected. You know, we got a family environment. You know, in the last two years, we built a culture Christian scholar athlete and, and our mantra is uh, Ephesians 3 20 God would do exceedingly abundantly above anything you can ask or imagine so our guys know that there's something bigger uh that's working here that God is doing something so our guys are excited to be here finally uh they're all in on all the rules and regulations that we need to do and our leadership at Trebek has done a great job of slowly rolling us out uh in a safe way a safe environment I just can't think of the leadership here enough our players understand we have a great role and responsibility to be leaders. And so they're just fired up to be together and be here. So in what ways have you and your staff worked around those restrictions just to try and have it as normal an off season as possible? Yeah. You know, I think everybody uh, fell in love and became specialists with zoom, you know, <laughs> zoom has been yeah. kind of our, our new norm. You know, this summer was awesome. We were able to really connect over the summer. And I think our, our spiritual growth on our team really led us to having some great conversations, devotionals through Zoom. Uh, we watched film through Zoom, connected, and, and did a lot of different things that were awesome. You know, having some devotional speakers like Toby Mack speak to our team. And, uh, you know, a good friend of mine, one of my best friends who's an NBA guy, come and do a devotional. And so our guys really connected through Zoom in a way that we wouldn't. You know, we we're all across the country. And our guys were really able to connect and really build a relationship. So now that these rules and regulations we have, so from recruiting on Zoom to, you know, doing scheduling on Zoom, our, our staff got used to it. Our players now understand whatever it takes for us to be together and grow together, we'll do it. That process of, of figuring out ways to be creative over Zoom and interacting with your team, what kind of process has that been with you and your assistant coaches? I mean, how often are you guys trying to think of new ways to incorporate some new things with your team without being able to be in the same room. Yeah, it's the great equalizer. You know, in the past, you would have to set a one-on-one -on -one meeting. The student would have to come and figure out times to get to the office. With Zoom and with different uh, forms of communication, I think every level has figured it out, from the NBA to Division One, uh, People are in the business world. They're, they're figuring out ways to connect across the country, no matter where you are and actually have intimate, uh, deep conversations. I think the one thing that's come from it is a closeness of our program to really know what's going on. You know, with all the things that are happening in the world, uh, you want to have a space with your coaches and the people you trust as mentors to really talk about those things, pray about them. And, and like I said, the, the devotionals for us was really key. So the creative things we've done is, is be able to connect in a way no matter where we are. And now when we're together, we really appreciate that time. You know, six feet apart with a mask and all that. Uh, we have to get used to, but we really appreciate when we're together because of the time we have apart. But still, so much of, of your regular off-season activities have been watered down or just taken away, whether it's in the weight room, on the floor. Players aren't even supposed to congregate together uh, without those restrictions. So how big is trust between staff and players at a time like this? Uh, it's, it's awesome. I mean, it is the biggest key. You know, I, I, part of why coaches to impact lives for Christ through basketball. Our coaches are the same way. They want to impact and have a, a mentorship or discipleship mentality. And most of the kids we have brought in and we'll talk about later, uh, it was because of relationships we had. A lot of our freshmen, they were relationship with coaches or with me and our staff that were really deeper. Uh, I think our, our returners, our, our older guys, uh, got some strong relationships with us to trust us through this process. Because if you don't have that relationship, if you're not able to have trust, 
that this could be a really tough time. You know, it could be a lot of anxiety and fear about what's next. Our guys are just trusting God for the next step. And I think Trebek has done a good job of that. Obviously, Mark Elliott, AD, the leadership has been awesome of, hey, just trust what God has. We'll get through it. But for our program as a team, it's just been cool to see us come together and, and bring so many players uh, to do something special through this time. Well, let's talk about uh, some of these new players coming to campus. Seven freshmen that you signed in the class of 2020, two transfers coming in, nine new faces for your basketball program. How have you worked on getting these guys incorporated and, and what excites you about these nine players? Yeah, it's really cool. You know, the two transfers, Brendan Newton, seven foot two from Liberty University. I recruited, you know, since when I was at Liberty, when he was in ninth grade, uh, Calvin Walker from Alabama Huntsville, his coach, Lenny Acuff and I, great friends. He's the head coach at Lipscomb, a great player. And uh, just someone we had a relationship with people we knew before. So being able to bring them in, they're all in. And then the seven freshmen, it's been really cool to get so many guys. You know, we have some local guys like Mason McNatt from Grace Christian to Hank Hutcherson from Lipscomb Academy to some guys across the country. You know, Caleb Terry, Connor Webb, Zeke Greer, Robbie Ruschiano. I mean, we, we got guys from all over coming in together. And they all want to be a part of what these older guys have set. You know, we have some guys who were here last year and the year before that really built this program and change the culture. And because of it, the freshmen have seen the spiritual growth, the academic prowess, which has been phenomenal. They've seen what we've built. Now they're here to help us go over the hump from a basketball perspective. So the older guys have set the tone and they finished the season in a great way. Six, you know, six games that were great and four straight wins. So they have a, a momentum about what this program is doing. And to have all these young guys see it and come, uh, it's been really refreshing this summer and now this fall. Let's talk about your coaching staff a little bit. You tweaked it a little in the offseason. Tay Gibbs gets that associate head coach position. Tide Coffee is on the staff. What's been that process been like this offseason with you three figuring out how to navigate this new world we live in together? Yeah, you know, we, we, we lost Reese Chamberlain this year, who was part of the foundation. Reese is a legend around here, went to Belmont and Beach High School and uh, his story with his family and COVID, which was directly affected a little bit. And, and for him to be closer to home and, and be able to do some things, we fully supported that. You know, this is unique times. And again, that relationship you have, you want to be able to encourage uh, all the ones you love. And so we lost a great one in Reese. But Tay Gibbs had been here. He got his master's at Trevecca. He's in the Ph.D. program. He's run our strength and conditioning as well as be a full, you know, full time coach. <laughs> In, in his role, so he naturally uh, kind of picked up where Reese, Reese left off. And then Tay, Ty Coffey was awesome the last two years, last year. He came from Liberty where they went to the NCAA tournament, came on our staff, and he just served. And he does recruiting. He does film. He does video. He does all the things. And so those guys were kind of ready for that next step in that role. And, and you talked about it earlier. We have a really close-knit family on our team. And because of that close-knit family, our guys really were excited that we continued in uh, the direction we're going. So at Trebekah, we want guys consistent. There hasn't been a lot of consistency from coaching. And uh, here, because we started this JV program, now we have some full-time assistants throughout the athletic department. So to have a program with consistency for these three years, Tay Gibbs and Ty Coffey have been awesome for us to continue what we've been building. Let's talk about what happened on the floor last year at the end of the season, a four-game winning streak to close out a 6-21 and campaign I know you don't like that record, but the way that you guys ended the season, just looking at some of these numbers through the first 19 games, averaging 61 points per contest in those last six, over 70 points per contest. And even on an individual level with a guy like Adam Webb going from 5.7 points per game, just over four rebounds to 15 points per game and nine boards in the last six matchups. Like I said, I know you're not happy with that record, but there's a good energy around Trojan basketball with that finish. What do you most attribute those last four games to? Yeah, I mean, they trust the process and they also uh, we built it from the ground up. Any program that's built for a great program for the future is better than just a good team. You know, I say I don't want to build a good team. I want to have a great program. And so we did the Christian part, you know, Christian scholar athlete. Our, our spiritual growth in our team was phenomenal for the first two years. We did the academic part. Over 3.0 every semester I've been here and keeps increasing. The last piece was athletics. And to have Chris Rogers, Adam Webb, Austin Wills, Monty Starlin, all these guys who did phenomenal job 
to see the results on the court. We were the one of the hottest teams in our conference, and it should be excitement in Nashville and at Trevecca for what the basketball team is doing. We finally got over the hump to the last piece of this rebuild of me coming to Trevecca. It's the athletic piece. Well, and there is excitement as you bridge that gap from last season to this season. But now as head coach, do you try to harness and maintain that energy going in, or do you see it as new team, new season, clean slate? Yeah, no, we definitely harness the energy. You know, we, we don't want to take step backwards. You know, our guys are so fired up from where we left off to where we're going. The new energy is because these young guys are now excited about it. The older guys know what to do. You know, we, we went neck and neck with Finley, the best team in our league, Hillsdale, the best team in our league, and we beat Kentucky Wesleyan. We made it to the championship game handily at home. And so we know what it takes to win. We are so fired up to pick up where we left off. And that's what's so exciting about this year, whether we – play in a bubble or where we have our normal schedule, whatever the NCAA throws at us, we're going to be so prepared for this year because we know uh, the foundation has been laid and, and, and this year we can have a chance to really get over the hump. And if all goes well, there will hopefully be a new season of Trevecca basketball here in just a couple of months. Cannot wait for it. Coach Omar Mance, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you. Thank you. Excited to have you, Lucas. Excited to be here. I'm Lucas Panzica. This is the Trevecca Sports Network. Thank you to Coach Mance, and thank you for watching.